Hello, all. It's that time again. Not only is it time for me to do yet another video, but it is finally autumn. And when it's autumn, um, people with YouTube channels like me, we tend to have a lot of autumn recommendations. Uh, so I thought I'd add my two cents, jump into the fray. Here we go. Now these recommendations are mostly going to be comfort zone things because that's what we look for in the autumn. The weather gets chilly and you just want to cuddle up and cocoon. Now what's a common comfort cozy cocooning thing? Cuthing? Uh, tends to be cozy mysteries. And I've got a good one um, that's not on a ton of lists. I'm not sure why. It is Father Brown. This specific one is the newer TV series. Uh, it started in 2013, and I think they just greenlit another um, season. These are based on the short stories by G.K. Chesterton. There have been a few iterations. This is the most recent, obviously. They star Mark Williams as the titular father. And Mark Williams was in Harry Potter, he was in Stardust, he was in 101 Dalmatians, the live action, uh, great actor. The series itself has a rotating cast. Um, I've actually only seen the first five seasons, um, but they were very good. The series is set in the 1950s, and Father Brown is a great character. He's smart, he's kind. He's very human and likes to help people out um, at the same time without going against the laws of the church, although possibly bending them a little when necessary. No matter what, he always wants to help his parishioners. This is one of those set in a dinky little cozy English town. Um, it is a most cozy British mystery. It's perfect to binge or to take at your leisure. It does go through the season, so not just autumn. Perfect any time, but especially at autumn. And yes, as I said, a rotating cast, but I want to do a quick shout out to Lady Felicia, who is a character I just love, and her hats. Oh my goodness, I could do a whole video just on her hats. Okay, I've said this one before a couple times. I'm gonna say it again. Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh books are incredibly comforting. There are no stories that I could find set specifically in autumn. However, just the comfort level is something else. And of course, the characters are walking through the woods. There might be a chill to the air that tickles Piglet's nose and they go home to sit in front of the fire and enjoy a little something. I mean, it's just these are cozy, cozy books and they're children's classics. So the nostalgia level is there. Next up, Another one that I've recommended before, but it fits the cozy factor quite well, the Before the Coffee Gets Cold series. These are melancholy and comfort wrapped up in one sweet little book series. The stories traverse the seasons as well as time, but everything is centered on one cozy little cafe. These are stories about family, friends, and love. One that I return to every so often, Mona Lisa Smile. Again, not completely set in autumn, but I do recall some good scenes there with the leaves and all that. This is a film with a big message, which honestly doesn't quite pull it off, in my opinion. Um, part of the issue might be that I, I know I personally watched this film with the big idea about women's equality, which is fantastic, um, but I tend to watch it for the aesthetic the look, the not only the seasons and the college, but the outfits and the hair. And it, it doesn't, I don't know, not to say that part, that stuff can't be part of women's equality, but it's kind of like, I'm watching this for the hair. But anyway, there's the big college and the fall and winter seasons. It's just, it's, it's queuing up the dark academia for me. Yeah, speaking of dark academia, this is the time of year when I seek out those piano videos, you know, with like the stills from a movie with the big old colleges and stone buildings and everything, and everything's looking very wintry and melancholy. Another thing I like to play are like the vintage songs. Um, there are some good autumn ones. Jake Westbrook has um, a few good playlists, and there are some copycats of him as well. Um, now, there are two popular classic songs that I like to play a lot during this time. Autumn Leaves and September Song. Now, there are, those have been popular for forever, practically, and there are so many versions out there. 
the first version of Autumn Leaves, which is odd because I've listened to a lot of old music growing up. The first version of Autumn Leaves I heard was at that time a contemporary version. It was in the mid-90s, and it is by Cold Cut. So look up, obviously I can't play it here, but look up the Cold Cut Autumn Leaves version. It is on YouTube. It's very good. It is 90s. Yes, um, so they weren't like a dance band, more like a mm, ambient house. I don't know, one of those. I don't know the terms, um, but listen to it and you'll probably figure it out for yourself. As to September song, I hadn't heard that either until I happened to hear on the radio of all things. Um, I know, what's that about? Possibly the first version, I don't know if it was, but it was by Walter Houston, the classic movie actor Walter Houston, who also could sing and dance and all those things. Um, he was also a stage actor, and he actually introduced this song in a stage play. Which is funny when I read about it because the song, it doesn't come across this way. But in the show, he was the villain. He sang the song attempting to get the sweet young lead gal to marry him instead of the, um, I presume, hot studly male, young male lead guy. But the song comes across as an older man looking back on his life and, you know, remembering and, and thinking about his regrets and his happiness, his sorrows, and what he has yet before him. It's just, it's, it's sung so sweetly and with character. I love his voice. Walter Houston's September song, also on YouTube. Look that one up. I'll put the links below. Okay, another one. Speaking of Jake Westbrook, I have mentioned this one before as well. Uh, again, these are things that I return to every so often. A Case in Oak Haven. This is a cozy mystery set in a small town in autumn. Completely in autumn. I can't show it here. I own this. It's, it's right here. I cannot find the book for the life of me. <laughs> Go figure. But I, I have it and I read it and I will probably read it again because it is appropriate to this time of year. It was written by Jake Westbrook, who did the um, the playlists, and he also actually has a radio show podcast that he co-hosts with his brother, and that also is very enjoyable. That's how I found out about the book. Links to everything in the description. Okay, so a mention of autumn would not be complete without a nod to the holidays and autumn, right? So I'm, I'm not big on Halloween. I like the coziness of autumn. I'm not, I don't enjoy being scared. Um, but I, I do like some things about Halloween. And one of the things I like doing around any holiday is watching movies. So one of the movies we come back to time and again with my family is the 1991 Adams Family. That is our go-to Halloween movie. I remember in the 90s, oh God, I'm sounding old. I remember in the 90s, there was a big craze for making movies based on TV shows that boomers used to enjoy. Basically a cash grab and very obvious, but this movie was very good and it's one of the ones that has stuck around through the years. There are great sets, great costumes, great music, great performances, and lines like, are they made from real Girl Scouts? will never not be awesome. As for Nightmare Before Christmas, this is not a Halloween movie for us, nor is it a Christmas one, because it balances Halloween and Christmas fairly evenly, so therefore it ends up in the middle. We watch this one, as well as Adam's Family Values, around Thanksgiving. It is a Thanksgiving movie. American Thanksgiving. It's probably obvious with the dining and all. Speaking of Halloween, you gotta watch Bewitched. You just, you gotta. Uh, it's on Roku. I, I found it on Roku. Um, so yeah, another classic. And I was watching it and I was thinking, you know what, when you come down to it, you know, it's not exactly a feminist call to arms given the time and everything, but Samantha was no fainting flower either. And even though she was ostensibly trying to please her husband or more rarely, very rarely her mother, no matter what, she usually wound up doing just what she wanted to in the first place. 
it's still a fun show. The simple effects are obvious. They were always obvious, but it just adds to the fun. My 10 year old loves this show. So yeah, still fun for the whole family. And especially around Halloween, if you've got little littles, then it's probably more the way to go. Okay, wrapping up the TV business. This old house. I've never seen it. <laughs> I had never seen this old house. It's like, oh, what? I want to watch people fixing houses. Oh, boy. But, yeah, I finally decided to check it out. And, man, is it worth it. it this is a real treat. Um, again, this one is on Roku. Um, so there are ads, but they have all the seasons. Some of the seasons are paid. I couldn't go back to super old. I started watching in, like, 1980 for the 1984 season, that is. But I went back as old as I could because of the nostalgia factor. It's like, well, maybe I can learn something and at the same time, maybe what I'm learning is wrong because maybe it's been updated, but I just, I couldn't resist. I had to go back and watch the old ones first. It's, it's I'm a very linear person, I had to do that. Um, in any case, yeah, I fixing up the house is kind of what you do around fall. So that, plus the nostalgia, it seemed very appropriate. Okay, last with the books. Trixie Belden. I think I've mentioned her stuff before, too. And this is definitely some personal nostalgia for me. I've always been a Trixie Belden gal over Nancy Drew. Trixie is definitely imperfect. She is impulsive, and that gets her into trouble sometimes. Never anything major, but like she'll hurt herself or something like that and learn a good lesson out of it. Now these mysteries are also excellent cozy mysteries. Predictably, since they've been written, you know, going since the 1950s, there are parts that are dated, um, but I've been rereading them. There's nothing too major so far, nothing really, you know, overtly racist or anything like that. Um, if you read it and see anything I'm missing, you know, do speak up and let me know, definitely. The books are well written, and as I said, Trixie is definitely an imperfect heroine, but she is one who you can root for. She has the very best of intent. The mysteries themselves usually have a fairly obvious solution and or a solution that is based on a fallacy. For example, two blue-eyed parents can have a brown-eyed kid. But the fact is you don't really read these to solve the mystery, you just enjoy the ride. Now, the Bob Whites enjoy plenty of trips, but they also are based in an idyllic small town. They spend plenty of time in a forest preserve. Trixie's family in particular has a small family farm. These are all comfort-ish elements. Like, small towns may not be idyllic in real life. Um, I've been in plenty that aren't. But this is idealism. Which is idealism and idyllic? Are those words related? They sound like it. And I see these as very comfort slash fall-ish essentials. Now, you might have guessed this about me, but I like a lot of older stuff. I like retro-ness, and fall for me calls for retro everything. Books, magazines, movies, music. I like to immerse myself in retro-ness. Nostalgia is big in fall. And there's kind of a, a comfort in the concreteness of what came before. Like, it's the way it is. It's not going to change and take you by surprise. Of course, that's kind of its downside, too. Like, overt racism and whatnot. So, your comfort level may differ. I encounter it. I shake my head, go, oh, why did we ever... And then I try to enjoy what else there is. I kind of try to take a lesson from it, say, oh, that was bad, let's not do that, and move on. But again, your comfort level may differ. If um, that doesn't work for you, then, you know, avoid it. Then that leads me into my wrap-up. Slowing down. Writing a letter. Like an actual letter. I have a friend who is not on social media, and we started writing to each other and it's great. It's really just wonderful to sit down and space out my thoughts and hit the highlights, and it's it's great. I never used to like writing letters as a kid, but now that I'm grown up, it's like, this is nice to just sit down and do intentionally. Now, fall is the time when we naturally slow down. The cold weather makes us 
look around and take stock of things. It's naturally, it's when we winterize our car, when we dig out the cozy sweaters, and we see what needs doing around the house. And since we're doing that, it's natural to do the same with our lives. At the same time, nature is our cue because we've got the clouds gathering more often. We've got the leaves falling from the trees. Obviously, all this is only applicable as long as you're higher up in the hemisphere. Um, but, you know, this is... I think even in the South, this is what you tend to think of when you think of autumn. I'm guessing. I don't know. I don't live in the South. Now, all that's happening in nature is it becomes a metaphor for life. It signifies an end of things. It's a reminder to us that nothing lasts forever. And that's okay. It makes us take time to remember things that have made us happy, to discover new things, but more at leisure so that we can focus on them and hopefully we'll enjoy them more as a result. We can look around at what we have and sit and focus and appreciate. Okay, so to wrap up, that's what I'm going to go do. I'm already... <laughs> All this wonderful autumnal stuff is making me want to go and do some autumnal stuff. So I'm going to turn off the camera and go do something quiet maybe just sit in the old rocking chair and look out the window that sounds nice i hope you get the chance to do that too sit and just take stock of things sometime this autumn i know i know we have the ideals um and it doesn't life doesn't always line up it is school time after all and that can be busy if you've got kids. Oh boy. Um, but I do hope that you are able to take a little time for yourself to just rest. <laughs> just rest and enjoy that autumnal weather if you've got it. Okay, that's that's enough for now. I will see you next week. Enjoy, enjoy your week as much as possible. <laughs> Bye.